All right, welcome back. Let's talk about pH of weak acid and weak base solutions. You remember from the previous videos that we talked about pH, pOH, H plus, and OH minus, and we saw how these parameters were related. Well, those will remain, even in this video, I mean, those relationships remain true. However, we are going to look at some peculiarities that um, the weak acids and weak bases show when in solution, in terms of how we calculate their own pH. Ordinarily, we say, when an acid ionizes, let's say this is an acid HA, if it ionizes, it's going to give us H plus and A minus. Now, for a weak acid, what's a weak acid? We say it's an acid that does not ionize well in water. It ionizes only partially. And what that means is that if you put an acid HA inside water, much of the acid will remain as HA and very little will become H plus and A minus. It means, therefore, that the concentration of this guy would literally not change. I mean the associated acid, not the ions. The concentrations of the ions will be very low because the acid fails to ionize, whereas the concentration of the unionized acid will remain high. Then again, this equation shows us that one mole of HA gives one mole of H plus and one mole of A minus. So irrespective of the amount of this that ionizes, the resulting concentrations of these two ions will be the same according to the equation. So based on that, first lesson, H plus concentration is equal to A minus concentration. They will be the same based on the equation. And then second, HA concentration remains constant. It doesn't change. So based on that, for this reaction we are seeing here, which is reversible, of course, you know, we can write an equilibrium constant expression or a mass action expression. So I'm going to write the mass action expression. Normally we say Kc, but in this case, I'm going to say Ka. Why am I writing Ka now? Because an acid is dissociating here. So the type of equilibrium constant I'm going to use here is Ka. We call it acid dissociation constant. So by first principles, we say Ka is equal to H plus concentration times A minus concentration all over HA concentration. Now, from here, I can go ahead to say Ka equals H plus concentration times H plus concentration. Why is that? Because we already said here that the two of them are equal all over C. And what does C stand for? C is the original concentration of this acid that was dissolved. So we take that to be the concentration of the acid or molarity of the acid. And then from here, we are going to say KAC by cross multiplication now is equal to H plus concentration squared. So that if we make H plus the subject, we have H plus equals the square root of Ka times C. Now you'd remember that um, in uh, I think the first video on pH, we said that pH for a solution is negative logarithm to base 10 of H plus concentration. Now since for a weak acid, this is H plus, it means that we could say that for a weak acid, pH equals the negative log, negative log of root KAC. In which case, when we are given a question on pH of a weak solution and they give us the molarity of the solution, they also give us the Ka of the acid in question, then this would be our formula. But please take note, if you see a question on a weak acid solution, and in that question they already give you the hydrogen ion concentration, H+, then you can go ahead and use this original formula that we've always known. Now I'd like to add that this formula I have given us is useful only for calculating the pH of weak monobasic acids. What do you mean by monobasic? A monobasic acid is one that has only one replaceable hydrogen. So this is our formula, pH equals negative log root Kac. 
How does that formula apply? We have questions on the board. Let's see questions one and two, just so that you see how this formula is used. So the first one says calculate the pH of a 0.0020 molar solution of ethanoic acid. Now this value given to us here is the molarity. And then in brackets, we are given the Ka of ethanoic acid. So we have an easy question there because all we need to do is say pH equals negative logarithm of root Kac. So that pH becomes the negative logarithm of roots. What's our Ka now? 1.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times. The solution has a concentration of 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 3. So from here, I'd say pH equals negative log roots. 1.8 times 2 is 3.6. So times 10 raised to the power minus 8. So the pH now would be equal to the negative log of... Let's find the square root of that number. So you grab your calculator. Square root of 3.8 times 10 raised to... 3.6 rather, times 10 raised to the power minus 8 equals it gives me 1.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 so i have 1.9 times 10 raised to the power minus 4 so that the ph now becomes the negative log of this value that's definitely a three point so let's find out okay so we have 3.72 so 3.72 that's the ph of the solution so we have the ph as 3.72 the question was that easy and if, of course, the question had said POH, what would have happened? From the previous video, we already said that POH would always be 14 minus pH, just as pH would be 14 minus POH. Why? Because in that same video, we said pH plus POH equals 14. So that's how we got this. So that I'll say that the POH in this case would be equal to 14 minus 3.72 and that gives us 10.28 but of course we're not asked to calculate POH so it means that the solution to this question ends there so that was our first question you may pause the video for a while and see what it's about and see how um, you can follow through on the solution and then there's a second example there that we're about to solve it says what is the PKA of a 0.05 molar solution of angelic acid whose measured pH is 4.0 at room temperature 25 degrees Celsius. Now what's the essence of the temperature I added there, 25 degrees Celsius? It's not like I'll use it in my solving or in the solution to this question, but I put it there just to remind you of the fact that pH varies with temperature. Yeah, the pH of a solution at room temperature is not its pH at 40 degrees Celsius. And that's simply because Kw, which we call water dissociation constant, varies with temperature. So as long as Kw varies, then pH will continue to vary. Now in any case, that's our second question. It says, what's the pKa of? Now, what is pKa? In this discussion, we've not talked about pKa yet. The much we've talked about is Ka. But I'd like to tell you that, just as for strong solutions, we tend to talk more about H plus concentration and OH minus concentration, so that when we take their negative logs, we now have pH and pOH. That's how we could also talk about Ka, and KB, especially for weak solutions. And when we take their own negative logs, we get P, KA, and P, KB. So think about this. For strong solutions, we deal more with H plus OH minus. Their negative logarithms to base 10 are pH and pOH respectively. However, for weak solutions, we tend to talk more about KA and KB. And then the negative log of Ka or negative log of Kb will give us Pka and Pkb respectively. Then from the previous videos, we also saw that when these two are multiplied, we get 10 raised to the power minus 14. And when these two are added, we get 14. In like manner, if you multiply these two, you get 10 raised to the power minus 14. And if you add these two, you also get 14. So it means that what this question is asking us for as Pka is actually the negative logarithm of the Ka. 
So we may need to get Ka first and then we look for its negative logarithm and that becomes our pKa. So let's begin. Again, our formula says pH equals negative log of root KAC. So that for this question, I was given pH as 4, so I'll say 4 equals the negative logarithm of root Ka times, was I given concentration? Yes, that is 5 times 10 raised to power minus 2. So what's next from here? I may want to bring the negative log to this side so it becomes anti-log. So I'm going to say anti-log of negative 4 equals root Ka into 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. That's still multiplication there. What's the anti-log of negative 4? That is 10 raised to the power negative 4. All right. So that eventually I'll say this is equal to the square root of Ka into 5 times 10 raised to the power negative 2. I'll square both sides at this point. So 10 raised to the power negative 8, that's the square of this, is equal to Ka times 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. So that my Ka becomes, Ka now equals... 10 raised to the power minus 8, divide 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. Now 10 raised to the power minus 8, divide 5 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. Let's see what our calculator will give us. So you grab yours. Okay. So that gives us 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. So Ka equals 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. So that to finish this, I'll say pKa equals the negative log of Ka. We said so before. pKa is the negative log of Ka. So that my Ka at this point becomes, okay, we have the Ka already, please. So we say pKa equals negative log of 2.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. For ease, you can take this to be the same as pKa equals 7 minus log 2. So 7 minus log 2 becomes 7 minus 0 0.3. And that means that the pKa of this solution becomes 6.7. So that's the answer to our question, 6.7, that's the pKa. So if you see how I did it, from here I made the Ka the subject, and I eventually got Ka. Having obtained Ka, I got my pKa as the negative logarithm of Ka. So having obtained this, having solved this second question, there's a third question there, but that question is on percentage ionization. So we'll talk about that one briefly as part of this video. So let's make some space so that we can talk about percentage ionization or degree of ionization. But first, you may want to pause the video for a second and take a look at this again. And then when you're done with it, you can play it so that you see the rest of this video. All right. Let's now look at percentage ionization. Let's look at percentage ionization. For percentage ionization, uh, we have a simple formula for it, especially for a weak monobasic acid. We say percentage ionization, let's leave it at that, is equal to roots, KAC over C times 100 over 1. Root KAC over C times 100 over 1. KA and C retain their original meanings. They remain acid dissociation constant and molarity. So this is the formula we use when we have to calculate percentage ionization for a particular acid. But where we have a base... Of course, this becomes 
Ka on Kb now for a base, base dissociation constant times C over C. We didn't mention before, but it's not too late to say that we could also have POH equals negative logarithm of root KBC. This is like um, us saying PH is negative log root KA and then POH now is equal to what? Negative log. Look at this please. First video. PH. We got it as what? Negative logarithm of H plus conch, right? Then POH, we said in the first video, negative logarithm of OH minus. So H to H, OH to OH, more like acid to acid, base to base. So in like manner, just as we had said before, PH equals negative logarithm of root KAC. This is like acid to acid, then base to base. So if you have a question involving a base, and then you are given the KA or KB as the case may be, you can use this formula. But don't forget too that in this video we already mentioned that in a case where you need Ka and you are given Kb or vice versa, you can use this formula to get one from the other. But what is most important is when you are applying formula, always remember that the use of Ka here will give you pH and the use of Kb here will give you pOH. All right? So having said that, Percentage ionization for a base, if you have Kb for the base, then you use it. But in this question that I have here as sample, what we have is benzoic acid. It's an acid. So let's see how we can apply the same formula. Benzoic acid has um, a Ka value of 6.5 times 10 raised to power minus 5. What is the percentage ionization of benzoic acid in a 0.5 molar benzoic acid solution? So we have a 0.5 molar benzoic acid solution, but they're asking us what percentage of the benzoic acid will ionize? In that case, I'm going to say percentage ionization is equal to the square root. What's the Ka there? We're given 6.5 times 10 raised to power minus 5 times... We are given the molarity as 0.5 over the same molarity of 0.5 times 100. So from here, I'm going to get my percentage ionization. Let's look for the square root of that first. So the square root of 6.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 times 0.5. Okay, so we just get our answer straight. The percentage ionization here, we say percentage ionization was 1.14%. I just went straight, did everything. So this is a simple question on percentage ionization. And usually questions on percentage ionization are this easy. We can't calculate percentage ionization like this for a strong acid solution. Why? It is assumed that for a strong acid, it is very highly ionized. Like most common acids, ACL, H2SO4, we give them percentage ionization values of 100. We say they're 100% ionized approximately. But for these ones, weak acids, the percentage ionization is usually very small so that we need to calculate it. And this result is reflecting just that. You see how much of the acid ionized? Just 1.14%. So once you see a question on pH of a weak solution or percentage ionization, for many common questions, these formulas will work. You may only have issues when you meet pH of dibasic acids, weak dibasic acids, or even weak polybasic acids, weak polyprotic acids, like we would say in the alternative. Once you meet those ones, then you could have some one or two issues calculating their pH. But for cases like this, it's usually easy to calculate. So that would be all for this video. But remember, that um, you can get more videos like this on YouTube. Visit YouTube and on YouTube just search Dr. Quinty. Once you find D-R-Q-U-I-N-T-Y, typed as one word without a space, then you'd have many of my videos to watch. Remember to like, to subscribe and then to share so that your friends can also enjoy what you are enjoying. Thanks for watching.